Hello class, the next lesson here is on section 1.8, acceleration velocity models. And for this particular lesson, we need to recall Newton's second law of motion. So that being, assuming there's no air resistance and we let V be the velocity, M is the mass, then we could take for our differential equation on here, the mass times the derivative of the velocity with respect to time is equal to the force F sub G, that being the force of gravity. And that force of gravity, which probably should have, this is a capital G, not a lowercase one. That gravitational force then is equal to the ne negative of the mass times that gravitation, gravitation G with G being approximately 9.8 meters per second squared um, and MKS units or 32 feet per second per second for FPS units. And let's say for example, suppose that a crossbow, bow, crossbow bolt is shot straight upward from the ground with initial velocity 49 meter per second. We want to find its maximum height and when it occurs. So, from this, we know a couple of things. So, let's see. We have, for it being straight upward from the ground, that makes y sub zero is equal to zero. And the initial velocity is equal to 49 meters per second. And G being 9.8. So to obtain that crossbow bolt's height, that function is given by Y of T is equal to the integral of this is going to be negative 9.8 t plus 49 dt. And that would give negative 4.9 t squared plus 4090 plus y sub zero, which we indicated that was zero up there. So this is just negative 4.9 t squared plus 4090. And to obtain the maximum height, we need to set this equal to zero. So doing so, when we subtract, divide, and whatnot, we would obtain a value for t here when it, its maximum is at five seconds. So to find the specific maximum height, we need to take y of five. And that will make negative 4.9 times five squared plus 49 times five. Doing so, this will give us a value of 122.5 meters. And we know that the boat will return to the ground We know it's going to return to the ground when y is equal to negative 4.9 times t times t minus, minus 10 is equal to zero, which means it's going to return to the ground when 
t is equal to 10 seconds. In this case. But of course, when we have force, we also have air resistance. Since nothing just goes sailing through the air without any type of resistance. So we could write this now as the differential equation m times the derivative of v with respect to t is equal to the gravitational force plus the gravitational, the, um, the force of the resistance. Newton showed that for some physical assumptions, the force of the resistance is equal to k times v squared, or in a more general sense, the resistance, the force of the resistance is equal to k times v to some p power with p being between one and two inclusive. So the resistance is proportional to velocity and it is based on the coordinate, based on the coordinate system, we could show that the gravitational force is equal to negative mg and the force of the resistance is equal to negative k times v. Then the net force acting on a body is then F is equal to the resistance force plus gravitational force is equal to negative KV minus MG. And applying Newton's second law, we then yield the differential equations. Uh, the derivative of M times the derivative of V with respect to T is equal to negative K times V minus MG. Derivative of V with respect to T is e then equal to negative rho times V minus G well, rho is k over m, and that's, of course, greater than zero. This is a separable ordinary differential equation with solution v of t is equal to v sub zero plus g over rho times e to the negative rho times t power minus g over rho. With initial velocity of v of zero is equal to v sub zero and v sub tau, uh, tau is equal to the limit as t approaches infinity of v of t is equal to negative g over rho. This then shows that the body falling with air resistance approaches a finite terminal speed, the absolute value of t sub tau is equal to g over rho, so m times g over k. The equation then becomes dy over dt is equal to v sub zero minus v sub tau times e to the negative rho times t plus v sub tau. The integration then yields y of t is equal to negative one over rho times v sub zero minus v sub tau times e to the negative rho times t plus v sub tau times t plus c. And if we let y of zero is equal to y sub zero be the initial height, then c is equal to y sub zero plus v sub zero minus v sub tau divided by rho. And y of t is equal to y sub zero plus v sub tau times t minus uh, plus one over rho, rho times v sub zero minus v sub tau times one minus e to the negative rho sub t. And this graph down here just notes the gravitational force and what happens here based on the body falling, that gravitational force and air resistance. So, for example, as we were just recently talking about from example one, let us consider a bolt shot straight upward with initial velocity v sub zero is equal to 49 meters per second from a crossbow at ground level. But now we take air resistance to, into account with rho is equal to 0.04. And we want to compare the new results for the maximum height and time aloft with example one. So we are going to let y sub zero equal to zero, v sub zero be 49. And V sub tau is going to be equal to negative G over rho, which is going to be negative 245. 
So, doing this, we obtain then our equations, v of t for velocity, 294 times e to the negative t over 25 minus 245. And y of t is equal to 7,350 minus 245 times t minus 7,350 7, times e to the negative t over 25. And to find the maximum height, we are going to set the velocity function equal to zero. Which will then correspond with, to find the maximum height, the time of that, this would be 25 times the natural logarithm of 294 over 245. Tossing that expression into the calculator would give us an answer of about 4.558 seconds. And to find the maximum height, Then we just put in what we just found into the velocity function. So V of T sub M, that would give us an answer of about 108.28 meters. If we didn't have air resistance, it'd be 122.5 meters. Um, but to find when the bolt strikes the ground, we would then set this equation here equal to zero. And doing so, we would, uh, to then solve that, we would obtain an answer of about 9.411 seconds. after having to use an approximation due to this being such a complex looking uh, formula for that. And when we have the resistance proportional to the square of the velocity, this is where we assume the force of air resistance is proportional to the square of the velocity. So the force of air resistance is equal to positive or negative K times V squared which since it would be the same, due to this being the same sign and whatnot when doing this, and since we're using that squared to begin with, this will make negative K times V times the absolute value of V, and K is greater than zero. So by Newton's second law, M times DV over DT is equal to the gravitational force plus the force of air resistance is equal to negative mg minus kv times the absolute value of v. Or we could write that as the derivative of the velocity with respect to time is equal to negative g minus rho times v times the absolute value of v, with rho being k over m being greater than zero. Uh, for the upward motion, this would be defined then as the derivative of the velocity with respect to time is equal to negative g time minus rho times v squared. So negative g times one plus rho over g times v squared. Uh, the velocity function would then be v of t is equal to the square root of g over rho times the tangent of c sub one minus t times the square root of rho times g. And c sub one is the inverse tangent of v sub zero times the square root of rho over g. And the position function 
is y of t is equal to y sub zero plus one over rho times the natural logarithm of the cosine, uh, natural logarithm of the absolute value of cosine of c sub one minus t times the square root of rho times g divided by the cosine of c sub one. Downward motion is very similar. So the derivative of v with respect to t is equal to negative g minus rho times v squared is equal to negative g times one minus rho over g times v squared. And so because of that, the, um, because of that then, this actually right here, this is gonna be a positive, as a matter of fact. Negative g plus rho times v squared. That makes negative g times one minus rho over g times v squared. Velocity would be v of t is equal to the square root of g over rho times, um, times 10h of c sub one minus t times the square root of rho times g. c sub one is the inverse of that 10h function of v sub zero times the square root of rho over g. Position function is y of t is equal to y sub zero minus one over rho times the natural logarithm of the absolute value of cosh of c sub one minus t times the square root of rho times g divided by cosh of c sub one. So um, gravi variable gravitational acceleration, that is where a, unless a projectile in vertical motion remains in immediate vicinity of the Earth's surface, the gravitational acceleration acting on it is not constant. According to Newton's law of gravitation, the gravitational force of attraction between two po point masses, capital M and little m, are located at a distance r apart is that force being equal to capital G times m times little m divided by r squared. And capital G is a certain empirical constant, for example, being 6.6726 times 10 to the negative 11th power Newtons times meters per kilogram squared in MKS units. So with that being said, I have this example of a lunar landing. That uh, free falling toward the, toward the moon at an altitude of 53 kilometers above the lunar surface. Its downward velocity is measured as 1,477 kilometers per hour. Its retro rockets, when fired in free space, provide a deceleration of t is equal to four meters per second per second. At what height above the lunar surface should the retro rockets be activated to ensure a soft touchdown? Meaning uh, velocity is equal to zero at impact. So to answer that, we need to take for this, we would have the force divided by m, little m, is going to be capital G times big M divided by r squared. And to get the acceleration now, we need to use a differential equation here. So the second derivative of r with respect to t is equal to capital T for that thrust acceleration minus capital G times capital M divided by r squared. And for this capital M, we were given as a capital M for the mass of the moon is going to be given as 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd. 
this being kilograms. And the radius is going to be 1.74 times 10 to the sixth meters which is approximately 1,740 kilometers. So for this, uh, because we have a differential equation, they're not having anything to do with time. And well, let's face it, we do need to include that in here. Um, we need to substitute. So I'm just going to note that substitution down here actually. I'm going to set V is equal to the derivative of R with respect to T. So because of that, that second derivative of R with respect to T is going to be the derivative of V with respect to t. And that is going to be equal to the derivative of v with respect to r times the derivative of r with respect to t. And that's going to become v times the derivative of v with respect to t. Oh, excuse me, with respect to R. So we then have V times the derivative of V with respect to R is equal to capital T minus G times capital M over R squared. Okay. So now we could integrate both sides of this. And this is going to be with respect to R. So doing so is going to give us one half V squared is equal to capital T times R plus G times M over R plus some constant C. So now we could apply the before and after ignition. So let us first consider then, let's see. Let's first consider before ignition then. So, this would be one we have capital T is equal to zero. So for that, when we substitute that in, we then obtain one half times V squared is equal to G times M divided by R plus C. And we should probably use C sub one for that actually. So C sub one is given as V sub zero squared divided by two minus two uh, G M over R sub zero. So given what we know, that's going to be equal to negative 1,477, 1, that being kilometers per hour, This would be times 1,000. This would be meters per kilometer. 
times one hour divided by 3,600 seconds. Doing all that, we could cancel out terms and whatnot to give us a value of negative. This would be one, uh, 14,770. Divided by 36. And this would be meters per second. And then our sub zero would be equal to one point seven four times ten to the sixth power plus fifty three thousand. And this gives us a value of one point seven nine three times 10 to the sixth meters. Now the after um, the after ignition part, I'll do that up here since I don't have room. After ignition uh, part, this is when T is equal to four, capital T is equal to four. V is equal to zero, and R is equal to whatever capital R is at touchdown. So this then gives us the formula of one half V squared is equal to four R plus capital G times capital M over R plus C sub two, where C sub two is equal to negative four R divided by, excuse me, not divide. Negative four R minus G times M over R. And so, because of these, R is going to be given by, this would be little r, is given by one fourth times C sub one minus C sub two. So that would give us 1.7887 times 10 to the sixth. And for the value of H, that is going to take small r minus big R. So 41,870 meters. And the this will give the velo give us the velocity of negative four hundred and fifty meters per second based on that particular problem. And then finally we have escape velocity. That being what initial velocity V sub zero is necessary for the projectile to escape from the earth altogether. And this would then occur when V is equal to D uh, derivative of R with respect to T being greater than zero for every T greater than zero. So it continues forever to move away from the earth. R of T will then denote the projectile's distance from the earth's center at time T. And the equation is going to be the derivative of V with respect to T is then going to be equal to the second derivative of R with respect to T, that being negative G times, negative capital G times capital M divided by R squared. We could then apply the chain rule as the derivative of V with respect to T is equal to V times the derivative of V 
with respect to R to give derivative of V, uh, V times derivative of V with respect to R is equal to negative G times M divided by R squared. And integration then yields one half V squared is equal to G times M divided by R plus C. We want V is equal to V sub zero, R is equal to capital R, and T is equal to zero. This, we would be given C is equal to one half V sub zero squared minus G times M divided by R. And the implicit solution then is V squared is equal to V sub zero squared plus two times G times M times one, one over R minus one over capital R. And V squared is greater than V sub zero squared minus two times G times M divided by capital R. Provided that V sub zero squared is greater than or equal to two times G times M divided by capital R. And thus the escape velocity is V sub zero is equal to the square root of G of two times G times capital M divided by capital R. And so we could see that the mass M is a great distance from the earth here. And it's noting that escape velocity away from the earth. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you.